and welcome back to my channel my name is Anna and today I'm going to be doing my most anticipated 2023 reads let's get going first book is Kaiki by Vashinani Patel uh, so begins Kaiki's story the only daughter of the kingdom of Keka Kekaya she is raised in tales about the might and benevolence of the gods how they turned the vast ocean to obtain the nectar of immortality, how they vanquish evil and ensure the land of Bahala and prospers, and how they offer powerful boons to the worthy. Yet, she watches as her father unceremoniously banishes her mother, listens as her own worth is reduced to the marriage alliance she can secure, and when she calls upon the gods for help, they never seem to hear. Thus, before independence, she turns to the text. She runs red with her mother and discovers a magic that is hers alone. One day, Kaiki transforms herself into an overlooked princess into a warrior, diplomat, and most favored queen. But as evil from her childhood stories threatens the cosmic order, the path she has forged clashes with the destiny of the gods have chosen her family, and Kaiki must decide if resistance is worth their destruction and will wreck and what legacy she intends to leave behind. Uh, that sounds so cool. I think it's, it's already out, so I'm excited for that one. My next one is The Midnight Game by Cynthia Murphy, and this is about rules of the midnight game. Do not turn on the lights, do not go to sleep, and do not leave the building. When a group who have met on Creepy Dead thread decides to meet in real life, that can go along so many ways. They only have one plan in mind, they are going to summon the Midnight Man. And once you start the Midnight Game, you must finish it. There is no other way out. Six strangers, one night, how many survivors? So I actually watched a Midnight Game from Sam Goldberg, I think I mentioned this before, so... He, I think he kind of played a game wrong, because he was, he was not supposed to turn on the lights, he was not supposed to finish an early, because it actually finishes at 3.33 3, 3, or... No, I think it finishes at 3.30 a.m. Like right on the dot of 3.30 a.m. So he completely messed it up. You're not supposed to finish it early, but um... I don't know what time to feel about the game though. I don't know if it's real, I don't know if it's fake. But otherwise this book does sound creepy, especially for Halloween. So, the next one is Five Lady Fortune number 2 by Chloe Dog. And we actually have a title this time because the last time we said this, it had no title. But now we do, and we actually have a plot. So it is. That's my not having a meaning, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that's Foul Hot Huntsman. And it is Winter Joy Thick in 1932 Shanghai, as is the ever nearing threat of a Japanese invasion. Rosalie Lang has suffered the worst possible fate for a national spy. She's been exposed. When the media storm camped outside her apartment for the infamous Lady Fortune, she's barely left her bedroom in weeks, plotting her next course of action after Ollie was taken and his memories of Rosalind wiped. Through that marriage might have been a sham, his absence hurts more than any physical round. She won't miss until she gets him back. But with her identity in the open, the task is near impossible. The only way to leave the city and rescue Orion is under the gears of the national tour. It's easy to convince her superiors that the countryside needs unity more than ever. And who better than a mortal girl to stir pride and strength into the people? When the tour goes wrong, however, everything Rosalind once knew is thrown up in the air, taking refugee outside Shanghai, Old ghosts come into the open and adversaries turn to allies. To save Orion, they must find a cure to his mother's dangerous invention and take this dangerous chemical weapon away from impending foreign invasion. But the clock is ticking, and if Rosalind fails, it's not only it's not only Orion she loses, but her nation itself. Oh, I'm so excited. And it comes out September 26, 2023. That is such a long one. And my next one is Blunders by Terry J. Benton Walker. And 30 years ago, a young woman was murdered. A family was lynched. 
and New Orleans saw the greatest magic of mascot in the history. In the days that followed, a throne was stolen from a queen. On the anniversary of these brutal events, Clement and Christina and Trudeau, the 16-year-old twin heirs to the powerful magical dethroned family, are mourning their father and caring for their sick mother, until, by chance, they discover their mother isn't sick. She is cursed, cursed by someone on the very magic council that family used to do, someone who will come for them next. Christina, once a talented and dedicated practitioner of generational magic, has given up magic for good. An ancient spell is what killed her father, and she was the one who cast it. For Clement, magic is his lifeline, a distraction from his anger and pain, even better than the random guys he hooks up with. Christina and Clement used to be each other's most trusted confidant and friend, now they merely speak. But if they have any hope of discovering who is coming after the family, they will have to find a way to trust each other and on the family's magic, all while solving the decades-old murder that sparked the still rising tensions between the city's magical and non-magical communities. And if they don't succeed, New Orleans may see another mascot or worse. And my next book is heavily titled by Zilan by Zilan J. Shaw, and this is the second book in Iron Widow, which I have read. I loved it. I thought it was great. And this is Zeta My Balance, Dangerous Politics with a New Quest for Vengeance in the sequel to the Iron Window. A blend of Chinese history and martial science fiction. After starting devastating laws and making drastic decisions, Zetan finds herself at the seat of power in Hoasia. I think that's what you say, I'm sorry if I said it wrong. But she has learned that her world is not as it seems, and the relations about an enemy more daunting than Zetan had imagined forces her to share power with a dangerous man she cannot simply depose. Despite having vastly different ideas about how they must deconstruct the corrupt and misogynist system that plagues the country, so they must join this man in a dance of truth and lies and perform the roles of perfection in order to take down the common enemy, who seeks to control them as puppets by endangering one of Satan's loved ones as a hostage. With political unrest and pillious forces aiming to undermine Zatan in every turn, can she enact positive changes as a fair and just ruler, or will she be forced to rely on fear and violence as has come to her darker instincts in her quest of vengeance? She better not back down. The next one is Song of the Silver Flame, Flame Like Night by Amelia Wen Xiao. And this is in the Fallen Kingdom, one girl carries the key to discovering the secrets of a nation's past and unleashing the demons that sleeps at its heart. An epic fantasy series inspired by the mythology and folklore of ancient China. I always like reading about mythology. I think I think that's like so fun to imagine about it. Now my next one is a little bit has a sexy thing to it. So it's a touch of chaos, number four of Hades and Persephone by Scarlet St. Clair. I have read the last three. I think the third one I didn't really like. Or was the second one? It's either the second or third I didn't like. But I'm hoping this one will be good. And it comes out in September 26. <sighs> the world will burn. Persephone, goddess of spring, never gets an encounter with Hades. God of the underworld would change her life forever. But he did. He sure did. <laughs> a fight for humanity and battles between gods and in some world Persephone never thought he, she would see. To end the chaos, she must draw upon darkness and embrace who she has become goddess, wife, queen of the underworld. Once Persephone made bargains to save those she loves, now she will go to war with for them. Ooh. The next one is Sun and Blood and Moon by Mali Leons. I'm sorry, I'm just that wrong. In 1550s Mexico, witchcraft is punishable by death. Temples have been destroyed and tales of mythical creatures that once roamed the land have become whispers in the night. Mass vigilante Pantera uses her sorcery and legendary soul playing skills to battle in a world of war. Corruption, oppression, prophecies, and impending doom. All those try to conceal her secret identity. 
And this is a, a Zoldo in the Imagining Mexican History. Ooh. I have watched Zoldo. I think it was the first one, the Mask of Zoldo, something like that. It was really good, so. I think it was with Antonio Banderas. I think that was the actor's name. I thought I liked it. I also watched, not the Disney version, but the other version with Sergeant Garcia. <laughs> I love Sergeant Garcia. I feel so bad for him. But, uh, so it is exciting. Because I actually already read and finished it. I'll tell you more thoughts about it at the end. I'll finish it because it's actually a part of my TBR. And it's Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Hannah Fawcett. We have Emily Wilde, who is a scholar, and she is going to be the first one to write Encyclopedia of Fairies. But then she meets the mysterious man, Wendell Bellumbar, and now she is wondering who he is and what he wants. But she also has to like unlock the greatest mystery, which is her own heart. So that's as far as I can remember as to how the plot goes. I will tell you more thoughts about it at the end of February, but um, it was a wild ride. And also, you do have 23 days to enter the giveaway if you want a copy of this. So go do it. I'm not excited that she returned to this world that that is Mystery of Thorn Manor by Margaret Watson. I did like Sorcery of Thorns, I thought it was great. So I'm excited that she went back to this, even if it's just a novella, the sequel, that's how it says. But basically we have Elizabeth, Nathaniel, and Silas who must unravel the magical trap that is keeping who, that is keeping them inside the Thorn Manor in time for the midwinter ball. And things will probably go wrong, as always. So that's fun. I guess this is also yeah, this is also a novella and that is Last Violet Call by Chloe Gong, and we are following in a foul thing, you know, Norma and Juliet have established themselves as the heads of an underground weapons ring in Zhu Zhuang, making a living the way they, they do best while remaining anonymous in the peaceful, quiet life. But when they hear of a silver Russian girl showing up dead in nearby towns, they decide to investigate and ultimately discover that this mystery is much closer to home than they ever imagined. And this is also a giveaway. This is only in US only since 14 days available. And you only have 14 days. So if you want it, try it out. But it's only for US. I have in Canada, man. We're friendly. The next one is a Greek, Greek mythology that is Atalanta by Jennifer Saint. And this is a reimagining of the myth of Atalanta, a fierce huntress raised by bears, and the only woman in the world's most famous band of heroes, the Argonauts. And then for 13 it comes out. Can it come closer? Next one is Sing Me to Sleep by Gary Burton. This is like the Mummy Simon story where a son must choose between protecting her family and her heart and prejudiced king that my her existence is illegal. And the cover is so pretty. I'll put it up here or here, whatever. But the cover is so pretty, I really love it. I love the blue and how it like, pops out. It's just so pretty. So I think this book is like a yeah, body and clan retail and that is made of stars by Jenna Wallace. And this has been inspired by the lawless love story of Bonnie and Clyde. Jenna Wallace's hot stopping tale of passion and crime will have you seeing the stars. So, this one is The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romeo La Cruz. And this is in a lush world inspired by the history and folklore of South America, a sweeping epic fantasy of colonialism, Asian magic, and two young women quest for belonging unfolds. And the next one is Tom Blind by Natalie Hades, and this is a lead of Medusa, and we're supposed to be following her story in this book. Next one is Forging Seven Into Stars by Virgin Camilla. All spare love and war and magic. When Tycho, the king's courier, arrives in the remote village of Briar Lock, he all wants only to escape the demands of his new life in the royal court, where magic reigns for the first time in ages. The last thing he expects is to fall for a handsome blacksmith with a bruised heart. After years of toil under his father's cruel hand, Jack's never dared to dream a better life. 
When the movements of unveiling reach the small forge, he begins to wonder if he will even survive, until a magic wielding young lord offers him a tensing escape. Jack's best friend, Carolyn, doesn't trust this mysterious new friend. Magic once killed her parents, and she would do anything to protect Jax. But when another powerful man arrives from the capital, seeking her help, Carolyn will be forced to question everything she thought she knew about magic and herself. What is brewing, love is blooming, and magic may do or save them all. I actually have already read this as an audiobook. I'm giving you more thoughts when I do my audiobook reads. And so, um, yes, but I'm actually really excited about this. And that's Zada by S.J. Jones. And this has been Sailor Moon meets Cinder in the Guardians of Dawn Zada. Then start of a new visually imagined fantasy from S.J. Jones. I am really excited about this book. I loved Sailor Moon as a kid. I have, that was like my favorite anime of all time. So I'm really excited as to how she will bring that into a book. And my next book is also another Greek mythology reader and it is Clementinestra by Costanzana Casti. Cassetti. So this is I am studying the beat for Clementinestra, the most notorious villainess of the ancient world, and the events that forged her into the legendary queen. And finally, my last book is The Phoenix Crown by Kate Quinn and Jane and Kong. Chong. Marcel's 1912, at the height of an intoxicating party set by a mysterious American millionaire, attends a stumpious costume ball with his bride. On whom he has bestowed the legendary Phoenix Crown. A priceless relic of Beijing's fallen summer palace, the party of the century kicks off with 300 guests, 900, 900 bottles of champagne, and one quest for justice that spans two continents at six years. Okay, and that will be all for my anticipated 2023 reads. Let me know what you're excited for your reading. And please like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!